Well, the NCAA admitted that they got something horribly wrong in the Arkansas-Kansas Liberty Bowl, and none of us are surprised, except for the fact that they actually admitted it. We'll talk about that, as well as a few other players hitching the transfer portal from Arkansas, and a happy new year to you all. It's all coming up on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz in 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Friday heading into the weekend. And I apologize. I'm actually recording this podcast a little late. Uh, compared to what I normally do, but there were some circumstances that popped up that uh, had me to do it. So hopefully next week we'll be back on regular schedule. Won't have to worry about anything else except for for this thing that is just where we can just do it. Like uh, that's just I, I just we got to we got to make it work. But anyways, it's fun. It's fun right now, and obviously you all are probably getting ready for the new year to be brought in, which we'll talk about a little bit. But uh, there was something that happened in the Liberty Bowl, which when yesterday's podcast we talked all about everything that happened. Uh, we we went we kind of went into the officiating and some of the issues that uh, ended up happening and, and some of the things that came from that game where it was bad it was just bad all around and I don't think anybody was surprised by it not only just Razorback fans thought it was bad but national media people who cover college football thought it was really bad as well and there were a multitude of calls I think that the Matt Landers call is still one of the most egregious ones I've ever seen where his arm forearm literally hits the ground. And the ball is fumbled because of the ground causing that fumble, which should have been down immediately. And Arkansas should have won the game then and there. Could have gone away, but it didn't happen that way. And it was it was awful. Like there was just a lot of calls, a lot of misholding calls too. Kansas was holding so many times, like blatantly holding, nothing getting called. But uh, you're a check, Hunter. You're a check. I love this man. Like, he, he is my AD because he is somebody who is so good at throwing out something about a comment or whatnot and it not costing him any sort of fine or money or anything like that. He's really good at it. And in fact, after the game against Kansas, he tweeted out, he says, I will go on the record that after tonight's Liberty Bowl game that we have it pretty good when it comes to SEC officiating and our collaborative replay crew in Birmingham. Wow. So he's just like, he's kind of like a backhand compliment and, you know, saying like, Hey, we got it pretty good here in SEC because it could be a lot worse. Could be a lot worse over there in the PAC 12. But then he tweets out a screenshot, which was crazy, but also right. So it's a screenshot of an email that he got from Steve Shaw, the CFO of National Coordinator of Football Officials and NCAA Rule Football Rules Committee. The screenshot reads, based on the request by the SEC, a video review of the second half targeting foul committed by player number 24 of Arkansas, Quincy McAdoo, in the Liberty Bowl was initiated. Based on this review, it has been determined that the action by number 24 was not targeting and the player should not have been disqualified. The suspension for number 21 for the for number 24 for the first half of Arkansas's next game to open the 2023 season is vacated if 24 has eligibility remaining, which he does. Please ensure that Arkansas's next opponent is aware of the vacated suspension. Let me know if you have any questions, Steve Shaw. So it's kind of funny how not only was this based off Steve Shaw from the NCAA, but it's saying based on a request by the SEC. Now, this could have been something that Hunter Yurchek sent it to the SEC and the SEC sent it up, or it could have been something to where, you know, Greg Sankey was there at the Liberty Bowl. Could have been one of those deals to where he saw it firsthand and was like, that's crap, and I'm going to go send it myself or have somebody else send it. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It got sent off to the NCAA, and they said that, hey, this was wrong. They should have never called it. It was not targeting, and there it is. So it's great that they got it right. It's great that they fixed it. And it's great that Quincy McAdoo is not going to be suspended for the first half of next season's season opener, which is so dumb, even if it did happen or even if it was targeting. Uh, it's still dumb that that would even be the case. So I was just glad to see that they got it right. But I talked to, I'm, I'm going to be honest about it, I talked to some coaches, some coaches on Arkansas staff, I'm not going to name names. But some of them are saying that this was the worst officiated game that they've ever been a part of, which is saying something considering how many times Arkansas has gotten screwed over by officials in football. And it was a, a cumulative amount of horrible, horrible calls that ended up uh, being costly, especially for Arkansas. Luckily, it didn't cost them the game because could you have imagined what it would have been like right now if Arkansas would have lost that game to Kansas 
And that play against Quincy McAdoo, which would have ended the game and had Arkansas win, then coming out today and say, ah, I actually wasn't targeting. It shouldn't have happened that way. So, uh, yeah, just, just forget about it. Don't say anything. Like, imagine the reaction that it would have been. Like, imagine how crazy that would have been. So, it luckily didn't impact them that way. But it is extremely frustrating. Extremely frustrating to see, once again, officials, uh, especially the, the crew from the Pac-12, hopefully they never referee another SEC game or any game in particular, uh, as long as, uh, at least not for another year. Like, that was just so bad. But it goes back to my whole point about uh, there needs to be transparency when it comes to officiating. Uh, I think that this was a step in the right direction because for the NCAA to come out and say it was a bad call, it was wrong, and we are overturning the effects from it, that's saying something. That's saying a lot. They don't do that very often. And when they do, you know it's bad. So them coming out and doing that, I at least applaud them for making it right. But I still believe there should be some more uh, transparency with officiating. I think that there needs to be questioning from media with officials of why they called certain calls when they did, why they did, and how they did. I think that there needs to be things that uh, are more open to the public and open to where they at least are in the know of how things work. And I've said this before because people think that I want the officials to meet with the media just so the media can attack them. It's not what I'm saying. I'm wanting the mem to be a asking questions or ask questions from the media just in case some of us don't know the rules. Some of us may not be clear on the rules. We may just think that we know, but we have no idea. And instead of just letting it go and just saying, ah, well, because you don't know, whatever, have someone explain it. You know, if that was a targeting call, which it wasn't, but if it was a targeting call, I would love to hear. It's like, here's why it, here's why we called it. This is what the rules say. This is why we confirmed it after replay. And you still may not like it. You still may think it's crap. You still may think the rule needs to be changed, but it's at least a step where it's like, okay, I get it. I get it. I, I don't like it. I don't agree, but I get it. Instead of just doing it and then never hear from it again. So I'm glad they got it right. I'm glad they made it work. I'm glad that they got it fixed, but whew, just really glad that Arkansas won that game because, man, could you imagine? If Arkansas would have lost, and that would have been the game, the play that everybody would have been looking back upon and saying, once again, the Arkansas Razor Rex gets screwed over by the officials. Folks, New Year's is coming up, and you're hanging out with friends. I know you're going to be doing it, putting back a few cold drinks, a few becomes a few too many, and as the evening comes to an end, people start to head out, and you start thinking of calling for a ride. Maybe, nah, you live nearby. You can drive home. It's no big deal. I mean, what are the odds you get pulled over anyway? I'm right. Like, even so, like, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car, you can kill somebody. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk, and the results are tragic and often deadly. However, that does not stop everyone from getting behind the wheel under the influence, and that's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on the road to save lives. So if you think you're okay after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's life forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, so next segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, which by the way, this is going to be a quicker podcast because uh, again, time is, is of the essence here. Uh, but uh, there was an announcement earlier today that, Arkansas safety Simeon Blair and Arkansas linebacker Jackson Woodard announced that they would be entering into the transfer portal. Now, some of you may be hearing this and saying, all right, okay, that is not necessarily a bad thing that these guys entered into the portal, or at least you don't think it's going to hurt you next year like maybe uh, some of the cases may have been. But it's certainly something of note because Simeon Blair especially played a lot this year and should have honestly never been in the position that he was in. And I'm not going to tear down somebody or trash on somebody for uh, how they played, especially when they suited up for the Razorbacks and, and gave it their all. I'm not going to do that. But I am saying that he had a lot of struggles this year. There was a lot of problems. The safeties in general had a lot of struggles this year. Catalan was a great player, but when he went out, that was the difference. Because I honestly think, folks, and again, you can disagree with me, I think Arkansas cornerbacks with Dwight McLaughlin and Quincy McAdoo are awesome. I think they're great. And I think that if they would have been able to keep Miles Slusher on, that would be a really good cornerback, nickelback situation. We'll see where they go with the nickelback position and 
Uh, maybe it'll be something that's still pretty good. But when you had the safety uh, awfulness that was going on with Simeon Blair being back there and the problems they had, and even when they move Hudson Clark back there, which I I still am one of those guys that defends Hudson Clark because he's not as bad as what people try to make him out to be. Uh, it got better, but he's not a he, he's a good cover guy. Like he's great at zone coverage. Hudson Clark is. Uh, he's not hard hitting. That's just not who he is. Like so, as a safety, you got to have a combo of being able to cover but also be able to hit. And so, but they needed him to move there because it was so bad. And now you have Simeon Blair moving on. And if you look at the current situation at the safety position, you have Trent Gordon, who I guess is going to be returning. He played a little bit this year. You got Hudson Clark, Jaden Johnson, and Anthony Brown. And then you have TJ Metcalf, Christian Ford, and Dylan Haas, who are freshmen. Those are your safeties. Not exactly uh, steaming with any sort of confidence that this unit's going to be much, much, much more improved because of that. Seven safeties. Now, at cornerback, you're in a much better position. You got you got Ladarius Bishop a, a coming back, at least that's what we know for now. Coming back. Malik Chavis coming back. Dwight McLaughlin, Quincy McAdoo, all those guys coming back. I think all those players are serviceable, have some talent, and you could be just fine there at cornerback. But you got to get some safeties. You got to get some safeties out of the transfer portal. I think they will. I think that they got their eyes on some people, and especially once they hire a safeties coach, because they also don't have one of those. Barry Odom was the safeties coach, and he's moving on. So they got to finalize the defensive staff of what it's going to look like. But you got to get some safeties, and you got to get him here right now. Because as good as I think the cornerbacks will be, as good as I think the defensive line will be next year, and even as good as the def as the linebacker position will be, with I, I really like what Chris Paul did and Jordan Crook. Those guys look really good. They look the part. Uh, it's going to be tough to replace Drew Sanders, but those two guys especially looked the part. But, um, and then Jackson Woodward moving on. But even a Manny Powell's too. Like, th there's potential there that, that could go really well, but none of that's going to matter if you don't fix the safety problem. Because your D-line was good this past year, and your linebackers were good this past year, and your cornerbacks showed promise, but your safeties cost you games. It cost you to be one of the worst defenses in the country. If you just had an average safety situation, you probably do pretty well for the year. Like, you really do. But safety costs you games. It costs you big plays after big plays after big plays, and that has to be fixed quick, fast, and in a hurry. So they got to get into the portal and get some new guys and get some fresh faces in there and hopefully some quality guys that can help out. But, you know, losing, losing the players, losing Simeon Blair, it's not the end of the world. It's not like it, it's all bad. And, you know, because some people are going to take, oh, man, more players leaving to the portal. There's they're losing leadership up there, blah, 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 whatever. It's like, no, sometimes you just got to make a change. And it, it might be best for, you know, Simeon Blair to be going into the portal. He may find a better opportunity elsewhere. Same with Jackson Woodard. So I'm not I'm not fretting about it. I think it'll be something that in the long run will be better for Arkansas. But once we get to see who they hire as the safeties coach and who they bring in at the safety position, We'll know a little bit more about it. But uh, the portal continues to be crazy right now. And Arkansas, uh, once again, feeling the effects for different reasons. So uh, we'll get into our final segment here on the Locked on Razor X podcast on the other side of the break. So stay with us. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, and uh, this is going to be the last podcast we do of the year 2022. And I plan on next week, it might be on the 2nd or the 3rd, just kind of depending on what the news is for the Razorback athletic program. But I'm going to do a recap and, and kind of go through the top three moments or at least the biggest three moments, however it is, of the 2022 uh, calendar year for Razorback Sports. So we'll go through that and kind of give my reactions to all of that too uh, at some point in time next week. But I, I did want to say and wish everybody a happy new year. Uh, I know that it's a great time for when people want to start making changes to their life, you know, their New Year's resolutions that they may be doing, trying to get better, whether it's healthy or dieting or exercising or, you know, whatever you want to do, whatever you're dealing with, something you want to do and change. A lot of times in the new year is always the perfect opportunity to do so. And uh, I just think that it's good to have that goal. doesn't mean we're always going to do what we can or at least do the best of jobs to 
get over it and and to to make it happen and and be consistent with it. I think I saw a stat the other day that people who end up saying that they want uh, a New Year's resolution a lot of times by mid February. In fact, most cases by mid February, the resolutions are gone. They're they're no longer intact. They're no longer working. It's no longer a thing. But uh, I will say though that in this upcoming year, there's been there's going to be some things that I'm going to at least try to work on and to change some personally and some professionally, but at least uh, as far as here on this podcast, folks, we had a fantastic year. Like this was such a great year for this podcast. It has continued to grow at a rapid rate. Uh, the YouTube is killing it. Like so many of you watch this podcast on YouTube, which is awesome. Uh, a lot of you who are listen to the podcast too, our subscriptions are up, our downloads are up. Like everything is increasing at a very high clip and a high level. And, you know, we've gotten different software involved. I've got different equipment that makes it a little bit better. We've gotten the graphics uh, on the video side of things too and, and all of that. So there's been a lot of different changes and adjustments that's been made to this podcast that's made it that much better. And so we're I'm going to try to continue to improve in every way, shape, and form that I can. And I like also uh, getting inspiration from maybe there's some other podcasts out there where I'm not copying them necessarily, but just trying to get inspiration and trying to see how other people do it and see some things that I like, maybe I don't like that uh, we can continue on here too. But I say all that to say this is that sometimes I get in my own mind of like, I know what's best and I know what's best for the podcast. I know what people want to hear about or what people want to know or what people want to do or what people want to see. And I'm not always right. Uh, I know that's shocking to so many of you, but I'm not always right. I don't always call it like it is. There's a lot of things I may think I know, but I have no idea about. And so one of the things that I want to do on this podcast is that I want to continue to grow it and continue to make it better, but I want to continue to listen to all of you. I, I do read a lot of your comments on YouTube. Some of them are pretty dumb. I'll be honest. Some of them are pretty good. I, in fact, most of them are pretty good. And it's not talking about dumb as in disagreeing with me, just dumb as in like they're just saying nonsense. So I do read the comments, not maybe not every day, but I do read the comments as much as possible. I do see your tweets. I do get your DMs, whether on the Facebook page or the Twitter page or Instagram even. Uh, I, I read those and I try to respond to them as I can. Or if there's topics that people want, to, want me to cover, I try to do that as well. Don't always get to them, but I try. So I just want to leave it as kind of like an open door thing where just because I don't respond to you immediately doesn't mean I don't read it. It doesn't mean I don't take it into consideration. So if there's anything out there that you all would like for me to do or to change or adjust or whatever it is on the podcast this year, please let me know. I, I, I am, I am not too prideful to ever change any way that I do things because I'm, I'm just not that way. Like I'm, I want it to be best for you, not for me, because at the end of the day, it's me. Like I'm, I'm going to do what, do what you want because this is for you. The podcast is for you, not for me. So if there's anything that you want to see changed, adjusted, whatever it is, let me hear about it. You know, do you want more guests on? Do you want, uh, you know, do you want more different, different topics? Like, do you want different graphics? Do you want to sound differently? You know, whatever it is, just let me know. Cause again, I'm always all ears for anything like that. Uh, I always appreciate feedback, even if I don't always take it like and do it, you know, I appreciate the feedback and, and a lot of things that you all do too. So just let me know, hit me up, you know, all the different ways to hit me up and let me know about it. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube in the comment section as well. Just let me know. And I really, really appreciate all of you. Everyone have a great and happy new year. Seriously, be, be safe out there. I know uh, a lot of people are going to be ringing it in maybe a little early because it is kind of always strange when the new year is on Sunday. But be safe out there. Enjoy yourself. Try not to get yourself in trouble. And let's hope that this 2023 year is the best one in Razorback Sports. Let's hope that the basketball team goes to the Final Four. Let's hope that the Razorback baseball team wins a national championship and wins the College World Series title. And let's hope that Sam Pittman and this football team end up being even better next year and winning more games and having a great, great setup and a great schedule. And also, let's just hope that everything goes well. You know, women's basketball with Coach Mike Neighbors. Let's hope that they are able to improve on this past year. Uh, softball has been great with Courtney Donald. Let's hope that gets even better and, and they get back to the world series. So all of those things, let's hope that happens. Enjoy your new years, stay safe, stay humble. All those things out there. Appreciate you all hogs by 90.
We'll see you next year. As much as I hate that cliche, it's pretty much true.